Copan stands as one of the most important centers of the classic Maya world, flourishing between roughly 250 and 950 CE. Yet the story of this ancient city stretches back much earlier. Archaeological evidence shows that the Copan Valley, nestled in western Honduras, close to today's Guatemalan border, was already home to small farming villages during the early pre-classic period, before 1000 BCE. These early settlers relied primarily on maize, the crop that lay at the heart of Mesoamerican subsistence and spirituality. It was only many centuries later, during the early classic period, around 300 to 400 CE, that Copan began to transform into something far grander. This was the era when monumental construction appeared, stone temples, plazas, and carved inscriptions that expressed both political authority and cosmological beliefs. Around 426 CE, inscriptions tell us, a new royal dynasty was established. The man who founded it, Kinich Yaks Kukmo, is remembered as an outsider who arrived in the valley and seized kingship. From that moment onward, Copan was ruled by a succession of 16 kings who turned the city into a thriving political, economic, and ceremonial hub. At its height, Copan's population may have reached 30,000, a striking number for its rugged valley setting. Archaeologists have uncovered not only the great temples, ball courts, and stele that immortalized its rulers, but also the more modest houses of commoners, showing the wide social spectrum that sustained the city. Yet Copan's greatness was not eternal. By about 820 CE, toward the end of the late Classic period, its dynastic system collapsed, leaving behind silent ruins and broken monuments. The origins of Copan's dynasty have long intrigued scholars. One influential hypothesis suggests that the kingdom was initially formed by a Maya enclave that established itself within a region already inhabited by non-Maya peoples. This theory posits that elite migrants, perhaps from the central Paten region of Guatemala, especially the powerful city of Tikal, settled in the Copan Valley, intermarried with local groups, and introduced Maya political and cultural traditions. Archaeological evidence supports the idea of Copan as deeply interconnected with other centers of Mesoamerica. Links have been documented not only with Tikal, but also with Kamenaljuyu in the Valley of Guatemala and the great metropolis of Teotihuacan in central Mexico. The life of Kinich Yaks Kukmo exemplifies this mobility. Inscriptions recount his journey to Copan in 426 CE, where he inaugurated the dynasty. Modern science provides further confirmation. Isotopic analysis of tooth enamel from burials in Copan shows striking variation in geographic origin, especially among elites. Because enamel chemistry records what individuals consumed during childhood, these results suggest that many rulers and high-ranking figures, including the dynasty's founder, grew up outside the Copan Valley before relocating there. This finding reinforces the vision of Copan as a crossroads of people and ideas. However, isotopic evidence alone can only tell us about first-generation migrants. To understand the deeper, long-term blending of populations, how outsiders and locals merged through marriage, alliance, and cultural exchange, genetic data are now being brought into play. Such research holds the promise of revealing how a regional valley society was transformed into one of the most dazzling kingdoms of the Maya world, shaped as much by movement and encounter as by local tradition. The genetic history of the Maya region reaches far back into deep time. Ancient DNA shows that by the early Holocene, around 9,300 to 7,300 years ago, the people of the region carried a distinctive ancestry that had branched off from the earliest migrations through the Americas. Over the following millennia, the population was shaped by additional movements of people. During the late Archaic period, about 5,600 to 3,700 years ago, new genetic influences arrived from the south. Later still, ancestry from the highlands of Mexico, linked to the ancestors of groups such as the Mixe and Zapotec, entered the region.
leaving a mark that is still detectable in present-day Maya populations, even though the exact timing of this influence remains uncertain. Despite these influxes, there is also strong evidence of long-term continuity. For example, the people who lived at Chichen Itza during the Terminal Classic period show clear genetic links to Maya communities that live in the same region today. This balance of continuity and change reflects how local traditions and outside connections both shaped Maya history. At Copan, in the southeastern Maya world, the picture becomes even more vivid. Seven individuals dating to the classic period have been sequenced, offering insight into both everyday residents and members of the elite. Among them is an especially important figure, interred in a tomb built in the style of a royal vault and surrounded by rich grave offerings, marking him as part of the ruling dynasty. Not far away, another man was buried in a manner associated with sacrificial death. His lack of grave goods contrasts sharply with the wealth of the other burial, highlighting the social divisions that defined life in classic Copan. These individuals, along with others from surrounding structures, lived between about 250 and 830 CE, covering both the early to middle and the middle to late classic phases. Their DNA carries the hallmarks of ancient preservation. Short fragments, chemical damage over time, and extremely low levels of modern contamination. Lineages identified in these individuals reflect patterns still common across the Americas today. The maternal lines belong to haplogroups A2 and C1, which are widely distributed among indigenous peoples of the hemisphere. Three males were identified, who carried the Y chromosome lineage Q1B, the most frequent paternal haplogroup found among Native American populations today. Interestingly, an individual previously classified as female on the basis of skeletal features, but genetic evidence revealed him to be male. Taken together, the burials of Copan capture both the shared ancestry of the Maya with other indigenous peoples of the Americas and the unique social fabric of this ancient city. The presence of a likely dynastic ruler, a sacrificial victim, and several other individuals of more modest means reflects the complex intersections of lineage, mobility, and hierarchy that defined life at one of the most influential Maya centers. The genetic structure of classic Copan shows both deep roots in the Maya world and wider connections across the Americas. When compared with other ancient and modern populations, the people of Copan cluster most closely with their Mesoamerican neighbors. Above all, they share the strongest affinity with present-day Maya communities, followed by the Maya of Chichen Itza during the Terminal Classic period. This pattern reflects a long thread of continuity. Earlier groups, such as the early Holocene and late Archaic populations of Belize, also connect strongly with later Maya communities. In other words, across thousands of years, Maya populations remained genetically intertwined, even as political centers rose and fell. Interestingly, Copan's population does not stand apart from the broader genetic map of the Americas. Alongside its strong Maya core, there are faint echoes of connections to regions as distant as the Andes, Brazil, Argentina, and the Caribbean. These traces likely stem from ancient population movements that linked Central America with other parts of the continent. Breaking the ancestry down further reveals a layered picture. The deepest genetic component is one that appears in high proportions among the earliest Maya populations, those who lived between 9,300 and 3,700 years ago. This ancestral signal persists in Copan, though by the classic period it had blended with another component most strongly associated with northern Mexico and Arido America. That influence also appears in present-day groups such as the Pima. The genetic structure of classic Copan reveals both deep continuity with earlier Maya populations and wider links across the Americas. When their genomes are compared to those of other ancient and modern peoples, the inhabitants of Copan cluster most closely with other Mesoamericans. The strongest affinity is with present-day Maya groups, followed by the Maya of Chichen Itza during the Terminal Classic period. 
This close relationship across time reflects a persistent thread of genetic continuity in the Maya world. Populations from the early Holocene and late Archaic periods in Belize, for example, show strong ties to later Maya communities, indicating that despite shifts in power, trade and settlement, a shared ancestry endured in the region for thousands of years. At the same time, Copan's genetic profile also shows hints of broader connections. Populations from Brazil, Argentina, the Caribbean, and the Andes appear in close proximity to the Central American cluster, suggesting that ancient movements of people, whether through migration, trade, or earlier shared ancestry, linked these distant regions. The ancestry of Copan can be understood as layered. The deepest component is one that dominated the earliest Maya populations between about 9,300 and 3,700 years ago. Later groups, including classic Copan, still carried this ancestry, but it had become blended with another component most strongly associated with northern Mexico and Arido America. This northern influence also appears today in indigenous groups such as the Pima. Other genetic signals largely reflect geography. Arctic and early Brazilian groups form one layer, Channel Islands and coastal California another, Andean populations a third, Patagonia and the archaic Caribbean their own distinctive clusters. When the genomes of classic Copan individuals are compared with those of populations from across the Americas and Siberia, the strongest connections emerge within the Maya world itself. The people of Copan cluster closely with populations from the late archaic and classic periods, as well as with individuals from Chichen Itza and colonial era Mexico. This grouping reflects both geography and culture. Populations living within the Maya region share a deep genetic thread that links them across centuries. The results align with broader ancestry patterns showing that, from the late archaic period onward, there has been a significant degree of continuity in the Maya world, one that extends into the present-day Maya populations of Central America. To understand how ancestry shifted over time in the Maya region, researchers compared populations from the late Archaic, Classic Copan, Chichen Itza, Colonial Mexico, and present-day Maya with groups across the Americas. The results reveal a clear pattern. While the late Archaic Maya were more closely related to early populations from Belize, Chile, and Argentina, later Maya groups show stronger genetic ties to highland Mexico particularly to the Zapotec and related populations from Oaxaca. Analysis suggests that the Sierra Gorda region was not a major source of genetic input into the Maya, with the exception of classic Copan. Instead, the Zapotec appear to have contributed ancestry to later Maya groups. Even so, classic Copan individuals were overwhelmingly descended from the earlier archaic Maya, with only a small proportion, about 6%, of highland Mexican ancestry. By the terminal classic period at Chichen Itza, however, the genetic picture shifts dramatically. Ancestry was nearly evenly split between local Maya lineages and highland Mexican sources. This mixed pattern continued into the colonial era before swinging back toward a stronger late archaic signature in the limited present-day Maya samples studied. Dating analyses suggest that this genetic blending between local Maya and highland Mexican populations began during the early to middle classic period, around 500 years before Chichen Itza's height in the 9th to 10th centuries CE. This points to a long and complex history of interaction, migration, and integration between the Maya and neighboring peoples of highland Mexico genetic footprints of population collapse in the Maya region. Genetic evidence shows that the Maya region experienced dramatic shifts in population size over time. For much of the classic period, the population expanded steadily, reaching a peak around 1,200 years ago. This growth was likely fueled by the spread of agriculture, especially maize cultivation, which was central to classic Maya diets, as well as gene flow from neighboring highland Mexican populations. Unlike many other parts of the Americas, where population sizes remained relatively small, 
The Maya region was notable for its significant demographic expansion. But this period of growth did not last. Around 1,200 years ago, coinciding with the onset of the classic Maya collapse, the genetic signal shifts to reveal a sharp population decline. This pattern is not unique to the Maya. The Andes also show evidence of decline during the same period. However, while Andean populations later rebounded, likely during the rise of the Inca Empire, the Maya region shows no comparable resurgence in population size. The genetic record thus mirrors the archaeological and historical evidence of profound demographic upheaval tied to the collapse of classic Maya civilization.